Bob, Bob. Hey everybody, what's going on? Q here with Project Nerd, and it is time again for another round of The Last Word. That's right, your favorite game show and mine. That's where we get together with four contestants. Ooh, they're on either side of me. Look at that. I'm not even having to figure out which direction I'm pointing because I'm pointing at all of them. Uh, <laughs> they get together. I ask them some questions based on their answers. They will be awarded points and someone at the end of the game will end up with the last word. It will most likely not be this guy. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You got it. You're pointing the wrong Spe person. <laughs> Speaking of this guy, now I am getting confused and having to point at people. Uh, let me introduce our contestants for the evening. First up, to my this direction we have jessica Amazing. that's that's videos hi, hi jessica how are you doing pretty good hey thank you so much for joining us for the last word are you ready to really nerd put put your nerd cred to the test against these three these i'm three? ready i love having excellent. a nerd argument <laughs> excellent nothing as rousing as a solid nerd argument. Uh, next up, we have OC. What's happening, OC? What's going on, guys? Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Are you, sir, ready to really battle it out? I'm ready style? for this nerd off. I, I'm definitely ready for this. Perfect, perfect. Now, fans of Project Nerd may recognize the two below me here. Uh, they also happen to be my co-hosts on High Five Colon, the podcast on Project Nerd. We have the amazing Mia. What's happening, Mia? Hello. And the always wonderful Jay. This way. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh -huh. Now, I guys. I don't know why I did that ha-ha at the end. <laughs> Because you're that confident that you're going to win. You're like, ha-ha, I got this uh, already. I don't know about that. Now, for those who don't know how the game works, it's pretty simple. The game is going to consist of three rounds. Each round, our contestants will be asked two questions. At the end of that round, based on their answers, our contestants will be awarded points. Now, those points really only matter based on what I think, right? Because I'm the one who makes up the points anyway. It doesn't matter. And whoever has the most points will be moving on to the next round. And the other one will say bye-bye to. Now, we'll keep whittling down the contestants until round three, our final round, where two people will go head-to-head -head with one final question and only one emerging as the last word victor. Are you guys ready? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> that was a super what delayed reaction. Are, let's try that again. Talking about? <laughs> <laughs> are you guys ready to play the last word? Yeah, Ready. let's do it. Let's get this going. Round one coming at you. Now, in round one, I'm going to start the questions off super easy, right? Nobody needs to get worried. Things are going to be, I'm just lobbing softballs here, okay? So question number one, guys. The rumor mill is in full swing again. Up this time is a renewed Superman casting rumor. If whispers are to be believed, and my doctor says that they shouldn't be, um, none other than Michael B. Jordan is now in the running to play a revamped and renewed version of the Man of Steel. Speaking on said rumors, MBJ, neither confirming nor denying, simply said representation amongst superheroes is important. How do you guys feel about the potential casting? And if you had to recast and reimagine another superhero, who would you pick? I'm feeling I'm feeling Jay to start this one off. Jay, you get you I'm, get first answer. What you got? I'm so glad you came to me with this one. Michael Jordan is, is a favorite of mine and his uh, his uh stuff in Space Jam is legendary. I am all about him <laughs> being Superman. He's got the chin for it if nothing else. Now, if I were going to have to cast another superhero, Man, that one's tough. I would probably want to recast Batman as someone really handsome and with a beard like Q. Oh, man. I actually so, went out for that part in my mind several years ago. So that's probably what I would do. That's 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 where I'm I'm going to sit. Okay. I think that is an interesting choice. Uh let's go with OC. OC, what do you got? Um okay, so one I am 
can we just really not pretend like Michael B. Jordan is Shaq from Steel? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, so many people have had comments about this, and we're treating him like he's not like a, an acclaimed actor. This dude is going to be awesome in that role. I would love to see him in it. Um, oh, I hadn't even forgot about Kazam. I tried to block that from my memory. Um, <laughs> but as far as re-imaging, I had so many. I had Idris Alba for Green Lantern, MPH Ooh. for the Riddler. If we were doing Venoms, uh, we're doing villains. Yeah, that's a good. That's my favorite one. But we were doing superheroes. So when we're looking at superheroes, I got Donald Glover for Spider Man. I would love to see the childish Gambino just out there, just killing it, web slinging, and just doing his witty quips. That would be a bad ass Spider Man. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody is working on some points for this round. Uh, <laughs> Jessica, what do you have as a response to this question? Uh, so for me, I really felt like one, I think it would be super awesome to just have more representation. Um, the superhero movies are very whitewashed. I mean, that's just the best way to put it. Um, and I think internally, a lot of people like almost flinch because we've seen these characters look exactly the same for decades. I mean, decades and decades. Sure. Um, and so along that thought process, I actually was thinking about Captain Marvel in terms of how they presented her in the movies because they gave her backstory to be so broad. Like all she all we really need is somebody in the U.S. Air Force. And I was like, I would love to see like an Asian American just playing in that role, especially sure. because I feel like even though we're getting um, the Shang-Chi film coming out, it's the same typical like they're an Asian character, martial arts, you got like sword fighting. And I would just love to see an Asian character not have that, like give them the gut, give them the superpowers, give them the actual superpowers, give them the fantastical abilities, like why we always put them in this one niche. And I would just love to see someone like Captain Marvel just be more representative. I I dig that very much. Uh, and I have thoughts on that as well. M, Mia, the man, marvelous Mia, what do you got? <laughs> um, I actually had opinions specifically on Michael B. Jordan and... Uh -huh. I I, th I have two sides actually here. There's I see him play mostly like angry roles, which isn't his fault because there's only so like so many roles that Hollywood will give people of color, and so a lot of the roles thrown at him happen to be angry specific characters. Um, so when it comes to the potential role of Superman, like it would be, I feel like he'd be like forced into an angry style Superman, which isn't quite what I think Superman is literally cut out to be you already know my thoughts on superman i already don't like <laughs> the character at all you love and you love superman he's actually my least uh, favorite he's a super poster stand. boy um but would i appreciate the fact that there that there would be uh, almost for lack of a of better terminology forced layers within this type of superman because Superman's not from Earth. He's from outside. Like, there's already the separation between having a person of color play play any role, let alone sure. a, a white person play a role. So there's like there's different levels of subtleties, but then there's also we have seen him play only a, a particular role. So would they force him back in that direction, or would they have him like soften up a little bit and take on a little mm. more gentler approach and? Which is the one that I would want to see? I, I don't have an answer, but I see it going one of two ways, and uh, I'm open to it, but I'm not excited about it. All um, right. As for who I would cast in a different, like who I would recast, Wonder Woman's the love of my life, and she has been forever. And I would pick, uh, because the newest Wonder Woman is now a Hispanic woman, I would want adria arjona to play wonder woman now it the the new wonder woman not the one that gal is playing gal is oh OG. like uh like i would want the newest wonder woman to be played by adria like a That's reboot what I would want. nice yeah whole reboot give me that all right i i feel that 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start revealing my hand a little bit before we move to the second question. Uh, Jay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you just a solid negative two points. <laughs> oh, yes. For for both pandering and also making a terrible joke that you don't know this who is Michael the, B. Jordan is. This is the this is golf rules, right? It is, yes. <laughs> so yes. you're actually doing great. Great job. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, next up, I'm going to go with OC. OC, I gave you four points because strong opinions. I gave you four because Donald for Spider-Man was one of yep. the hashtags that I tweeted out the most yeah. back when that was a chance. I will tell you this. I, I, I lived for the day that I got to see a Miles Morales played by Donald Glover. Oh, um, yes. I was all for it. And oh, man. when the MCU ended up making a nod to it by casting Donald Glover in the MCU films as Miles Morales's uncle, I was like, all right, cool. I'll take it. I get it. He's, right, a little bit. he's uh, He's aged out of the role at this part, but that's fine. That's close. I'll take it. Um, so I love it. That was a solid casting choice. Uh, Jess, I love the fact that you want that you were suggesting an Asian lead for uh, Captain Marvel. I will say that they they kind of the MCU may have heard you years ago because they created the character Miss Marvel, who is a mm -hmm. active active fan of Captain Marvel and is getting her own disney plus tv show this year so we're actually going to see the live action debut of camilla khan um and i am super pumped about that personally <laughs> i played the new avengers video game and she is a dope character <laughs> and i cannot wait to see her in live I action i want to uh, play that game so i gave you three points and i tied that with mia mia you got three points as well you got three points because I like the stance that you take on Michael B. Jordan, right? Like most people are like, Michael B. Jordan, I love him. I will watch him in anything. And you're like, I don't know, man. I don't know if he's right for this role. I will argue that if there's one thing they could do to fix the Superman character for me, it's kind of what they did with Henry Cavill Superman and everybody hates. Make him angrier and broodier. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. Like, have him kill people. I'm fine with that. Like, make <laughs> Superman an interesting character. Yeah. I want to, I want like a Clark Kent Killmonger hybrid. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm on, I'm on board for that. Uh, and the only reason I didn't give you four points is because I don't know who the actress is that you referenced for Wonder Woman. And that's she my looks fault, exactly really. Like me. <laughs> oh, oh exactly you should have. Like I would have been more impressed if you were like, and me, I should play Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> In the reboot, Mia for Wonder Woman. We're starting the hashtag right now. Honestly, uh, that all right, would be guys. So that's where we are at the end of question one. Now let's hit up question two. Netflix returns again with their a new movie every week approach to the summer, right? Dropping a sizzle reel depicting everything from like animated George Washington by way of Channing Tatum in the American in America, the motion picture it looks like an R rated American comedy. I don't know what is happening there. Uh, and also a reboot of the classic R.L. Stein tween horror series. Fear Street. Where are my Fear Street fans at? Uh, und <laughs> oh my <Undoubt> god! <laughs> Undoubtedly, some of the films are going to just be garbage, right? And some of the films could be new classics. That said, does this like throw everything at the wall approach to programming work for you? Or would you rather see Netflix sink their money into more targeted project developments, like more high profile movies and give us like three to four really awesome films a year instead of maybe like two kind of good films out of 37. Uh, let's go with OC. What's your thoughts on this? Okay. So I'm going to start this very easily. Has anybody heard of The Last Dragon? Bruce Leroy, show enough. Oh my God. I yes. guess. Exactly. 1000% that's, yes. That's supposed yep. to be a trash movie. It was made to be a parody. The <laughs> fact is, they threw it against the wall and it stuck. Some of these are going to come from this. Like, I'm okay with you shotgunning me in the face with a whole bunch of trash movies as long as one <laughs> hits it, Mark. <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'll, I'll, weed, I'll weed through the garbage to find some gold. So I'm all for just keep giving me products because I'll find some new classics, some new things like that. My mind is open. This summer has been like last summer. This has been just crap. Give me a whole bunch of stuff. Uh -huh. Let me find 
something funny. Everybody has different tastes. I'm all for it. Just keep giving me content. I like that. That's a solid. You made a stance. You have an opinion <laughs> on that, and I like it. Uh, let's go with Mia. Where do you land on the Netflix debacle? I land as an in-betweener. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I, I always throw you for loops. <laughs> <laughs> Mia's uh -huh. making her stance right on the fence tonight. Yes. <laughs> In um, defense of the fence, I would like to say, go for it. I am on it. the fence. Um, it's for me. It's uh, it, there, I think there should be um, a balance between the two. That there's two to four. I even had numbers. That there's two to four <laughs> like big productions that they've that they've put a lot of time and effort into that will really engage people that they already know or is going to engage people, has the right talent, good story, all that stuff, production value. And then there needs to be somewhere between five and 10 things that are a little on the smaller scale that can hold in between to keep people engaged, but not feel overwhelmed or feel like they have to do too much work. If, the, if there's something that is pretty consistent, if you give people too many options, they likely just won't pick. And you uh -huh. want for them to pick your stuff. Um, but you also don't want for them to starve. So it gives them quality things here just a little bit and then a medium amount of the smaller stuff. Everybody knows yeah. medium, my favorite size <laughs> out of all of them. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I like that. Solid choice. Well, solid kind of choice. Uh, kind Jess, of. where do you fall on things? Uh, so I actually feel like I like the throw it all at the wall and give it all to me because I'm somebody where when it comes to Netflix, I like to chill. I like to kind of be able to be on my phone. <laughs> no pun intended. I like to, no yeah. pun intended. <laughs> but I, I do. I like to literally sit on that couch, that couch right there. I'm pointing all in the wrong direction. I like to sit on that couch right there. I like to be able to like, I will literally clean my house while I'm watching. I will be on my phone. I, I love doing crafts and I prefer to have something where I know where the storyline's going. I know what it's about. It's a good sappy, just feel good film, or it's just something easy for me to digest and watch. And I think a lot of the times, if you do too much of the like really good films, like then I have to like really sit there and focus on it. And that's not always what I want. That's not what I want from my Netflix. Like that's usually not what I'm looking for. I only want that every once in a while. So I'd rather you give me a whole bunch of a lot of stuff that I can just turn on and literally just relax to. All right. I think that's a solid decision as well. Kind of follow in line with what OC said. I like it. Jay. Do you have thoughts that don't involve Michael Jordan? <laughs> yeah, I, I do on this one. I, if you would ask me this question two years ago, I would have said Netflix has got to stop. Like they've got to stop. Just focus on making some good stuff, please. But Netflix heard me say that theoretically two years ago and have been putting out incredible things like, you know, Child of Chicago 7 and Mank and a handful of others have been incredible. So the fact that they're like, yeah, we're just going to start giving creators money this year makes me very, very excited. And it might be a bias towards Fear Street. I am a Goosebumps head. I own all of them upstairs. Um, even even the Choose Your Own Adventures. And honestly, if we're talking Fear Street, Ski Weekend, The Babysitter Night, um, you know, Overnight, The Haunted Weekend. You're telling me I could possibly see some of these? I'm, I'm on board and I'm, I'm fine with it. Like that's... It's a, it's a flip from where I would have been about a, a two years ago. I would have been a, a lot more uh, caustic towards Netflix. It's like, hey, we're going to – hey, remember when we gave you Bright? And I'd be like, stop it. Don't ever mention Bright again to me. Um, but but luckily, luckily, they're like, hey, what about like Mank and Trial Chicago 7? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, yeah. You want to send me over the moon? I'll watch it with you, Netflix. You're making good stuff now. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Guys, closing out the round with some awesome answers to questions. Uh, let's start uh, with, oh, OC, you, you got me with your impassioned speech. I believe you. 
I feel you. I also was on the fence, like Mia said, about uh, whether or not I thought it was a good thing. But you convinced me that I will. I I think it's a great thing at this point. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three points. That means you're closing out the round with seven points. All right. Now let's see where everybody else lands. Speaking of Mia and being on the fence, Mia, you know I, I love you. I think you're awesome. <laughs> but. I'm only going to give you two points because oh, no. if, there's, if there's one thing that we cannot have on the last word, it is a middling opinion. You have to take a stand <laughs> one way or the other. We so are nerds, you, gosh darn it. <laughs> that brings you to the end of the round with five points. Now, Jess, I... I thought that was a good answer. I thought it was solid. And unfortunately, you did you were not done any favors by going after OC because no. your answer mirrored his. And I don't know, I don't know if that's my fault. <laughs> it's probably we just, we my just felt fault. The exact same way. We just we knew what we wanted. It's the correct answer. Unfortunately, answers. right. That's it like is. that's like that's like closing for an amazing opener. You know what I mean? Like he, <laughs> he like had, he had the audience and then you're like, I don't know how to follow that. I'm saying what he's saying, but I don't know. So I'm going to give you two points. That brings you closing out the round with four points. Now, Jay, mm -mm -mm. you started the question two with a negative two points. First time in last word history, somebody has started a round with negative points. So first really? off to that, I'm kudos. Honored. Thank you. But I have Thank to you, give buddy. you the most the most accolades for the comeback that you just made. I'm going to award you 7 points, which brings wow. you to ending the round with 5 points. And here's the reason. Anybody that can name that many Netflix movies. <laughs> I know that you mean what you're saying. And you know what I mean? Book. Like, I know you're watching. Yeah. And yes, thank you. OC said it. You were just listing books. You're like, yeah, Fear Street. I know it. Yeah, I got signed <laughs> copies. So that brings you to five points. So that uh, gives us OC okay. with seven points. <laughs> Mia with five points. Jay with five points. Unfortunately, Jess, four points is not enough <laughs> to take you into the next round. So I need everybody to say bye-bye to Jess. Bye, Jess. Bye. <laughs> and in the Let meantime, in that means oh. the three of you are moving on to round two. Round two. Ooh. Fight. Did anybody watch Mortal Kombat? This is, that's not a question. I did. But I'm just curious. How I many have people have yet. watched Mortal Kombat? No, nope. just yet. one. Not yet. Okay. Cool. We'll talk right. about it another time. We're not going to spoil it for you guys since you haven't watched it. You right, plan yeah, on watching we watch it? it together? Yes. Yeah, should, and we got to watch it together. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting time. You guys watch it and then report back to us. All right, we'll guys. Go. Round two, coming in strong. Speaking of HBO Max dropping movies, hot on the heels of Godzilla vs Kong coming out. It is now rumored that GVK director Adam Wingard is now in talks to continue the monster verse with a son of Kong follow-up. Now, I know I asked if you saw Mortal Kombat, but what I really want to know is, did you guys see Godzilla vs. Kong? And should the monster verse be allowed to continue, or is it time to make those titans extinct? Mia, let's hear from you first. I didn't watch it, but... okay. You don't know. <laughs> I, but, but I have watched previous ones. And I okay. think I think if there was going to be a time to remake or continue the stories of these monsters, now is the yeah. time. We have the CGI to do it. We have the ability. To, oh, did I surprise you? Yes. Well, <laughs> you're quite... You're, your answer, to be fair, your answer seemed to be going in one direction and then all of a sudden took a sharp left into another direction. So I like just, it. Keep going. Yeah, just it's because I have watched it doesn't of the MonsterVerse movies. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean that I don't think it's it's worth watching or that it, it'll be uh, entertaining for other people. I think there's so many person-on-person -person stories, human-on-human uh, -human interaction that we're constantly viewing, even when it comes to superheroes and magic and... Uh, even when it comes to fantasy type stuff where there are humanoid type things, there's 
plenty of that to watch. I think now is the time to introduce something extra, something that is definitely could feature us, but isn't about like we aren't the focus. We're just help helping running the story. Sure. So I I actually think it would be pretty great. I don't know much about the lore, but I am intrigued to know. And if if it continues, I will watch it so that way I can I can keep up. I I think I definitely think now's the time. Okay, I like that. Uh, Jay, what do you got? So I I did watch it, and regardless of my review of the film, I have a love hate relationship with Adam Wingard, and so <laughs> I'm I'm torn on whether or not he should make that sequel. Here's my answer to your question: Should the MonsterVerse be allowed to continue? Yes. They, what they're making are, they are making their own version of a thing. And I enjoy elements of those things. Should that sequel be Son of Kong? No. Because that <laughs> is inherently silly. And what they're trying to do with this monster verse is make it not silly. And sure. so like the idea of being like, oh, well, the next one's going to be Son of Kong is like, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah i like that i like that the response. Death note guy sure all right uh perfect oc what do you think all right so i am definitely going to be on the other side of this of these two um i just want us to please stop ordering universes from wish um uh, because <laughs> everybody wants a universe now like, like we're just saying okay big monkey fight dinosaur all right make it a whole universe like, I, 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 like we don't need children's toys crashing into each other and just calling it a movie. Like, the, like it's it's great. Like, I love like the standalones, but to me, there hasn't been a good, um, big monster movie since like the two thousands when Diddy did the soundtrack to Godzilla and it turned out to have babies and all that other stuff. That was the last big monster movie that I actually liked. Um, these other Whoa. ones. Oh, okay, we'll get into wait. that. But keep going. What? Uh, let's understand. I saw it when I was young and impressionable. All right, so I everybody's giving me thing. answers that sound like they're going one way, and then they <laughs> totally surprise me. I love it. <laughs> so this like, is my like, favorite I, episode of this show. <laughs> so let's understand. Wow. Like even like that's how low the bar is for that to be a good movie. That's how low I think that MonsterVerse movies are. Like I just don't think that there needs to be a whole universe on it. One and done it every once in a while, and then we call it a day. Sure. All right. Man, that is solid. We definitely didn't have a lack of opinions there, and Woo. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and award points as such, right? Mia, I'm going to give you a solid four points because you surprised me. Like I said, you were the first one to get me with, like, the fake and then the, like, right hook jab, like – you have me looking over here and then you're like, bam, I've never seen one of these movies, but I definitely think they should continue. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I love it. Uh, so you got four points. Uh, that brings you at the end of question one, round two with nine points. Jay, I'm giving you six points because you saw the movie, you answered the question, but more importantly, you answered the, the real deeper question about Adam Wingard which was just peppered in there for those who wanted to pick it up. As they know, this man has made both your next and the guest and also Death Note and the Blair Witch Blair Project Witch. reboot. So I don't, I don't know anybody else who has such a like hit or miss filmography. The guest is so good. What happened? What nobody has told me is whether or not they enjoyed those who have seen Godzilla vs. Kong, whether or not they enjoyed it. And for that, nobody gets bonus points. I was hoping to get some sort of thought about the movie, I but that's fine. I, I, I will defend not to I guess OC was point. the closest by he, saying the last he, he, time he enjoyed one was Godzilla 98. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for that reason, OC, you're going to get five points. It's one more than Mia because you did have an opinion <laughs> this round. And well, so did she. Don't don't worry, Mia. Uh, and uh, speaking of things that I didn't see coming, you are <laughs> unabashed claim of love for Godzilla ninety eight <laughs> is an Ooh. opinion that I can just respect. You know, 
doesn't mean that I agree with it, but I respect that that is a hill you are willing to die on. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Like, oh, we can all love each other. You put and Diddy I, in the middle of it. You put Diddy in it. I'm okay with it. Diddy did the listen, soundtrack. OC, OC, what I'll tell you is that the fact that Diddy and Jimmy Page made a song together is the right. best thing about that movie. Exactly. I agree. I agree with that. So uh, that brings let's let's kind of recap for everybody. OC that puts you at uh, twelve points at the end of question one in round two. Mia that puts you at nine points, and Jay that puts you at eleven points. Ooh. All right, question two, round two, with PS fives and Xbox <laughs> Series Xs, damn near impossible to snag, and even Nintendo Switches still proving elusive to many vintage consoles have seen a huge surge in popularity. Now, if you guys had to pick one vintage console to be the new it system, what would it be and why? Jay, you're going to get first dibs at this question. All right. So Q, you know, my personal angst with this PS five <laughs> situation. Yes. I've been trying for months to get one. So this, this hits close to home. But I am also not going to rely on my personal knowledge of you and Mia because we talked about consoles on High Five <laughs> Podcast not too long ago. So what I'm going to do is just land is, you know, I could go out and buy a Sega USB plug-in and have like a bunch of Sega games. And I know they do that with the old NES. I want a Dreamcast. Give me a Dreamcast. Give me it back. Give me a USB that I can play. Give me just a little box. Like it could be a box. I'll keep it on my keychain. I'll love it. I'll pet it. And then I'll plug it in a USB on a television. And I can play all 86 games that Dreamcast ever made. That's the whole library <laughs> probably. And I'll play all of them. And I will play no one uh, in fighting games, but I will still love it because those pixelated <laughs> sexy costumes are making those men's legs look fine. <laughs> and everybody else is looking that. great too. I love it. Solid. Uh, let's go with OC. OC, what are your thoughts? Oh, crazy taxi Dreamcast. That was that was a good one. Was, oh, uh, crazy taxi. taxi. No, I, just had, I just had to give a nod. I had to give a nod. Thank you. Um, Thank you. All right. So every answer is wrong unless you're picking N64. N64 <laughs> is by far the best console to ever touch the market. The best games came from it. We're talking GoldenEye, Smash Brothers, Mario 64, Thank Legend you. of Zelda. Like, Get 64. Like, it, it's an, even like NWO versus WCW wrestling. I have broken so many tables in my home just jumping off of the couch and landing on them <laughs> because of that video game. They made that Don't Try This at Home because of me. Like I <laughs> am all about N64. And I... I hate to even call it vintage because I have such like memories of it of my youth, um, but also it's 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 a classic and it's still hard to get. Like that's how like epic it was. Like you still cannot get them. They're so hard to find and they're still expensive. You've downloaded you've downloaded the games. They they refurb them for all the new Nintendo software, so you can just download. Mar <laughs> I played I played Mario sixty four like a year ago. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And they don't lose value. Like you're still oh. loving them as you played them as a child. The nostalgia, Banjo Kazooie, like that even comes out of nowhere. Like we're talking <laughs> classics upon classics. In mm. 64, mm -hmm. no doubt. I love it. Sick, Mia. You gotta. I don't know. You had two great openers. What do you got? Is it in 64? <laughs> no, I didn't own an N64. Okay. I never got to play on an N64. Oh. I don't understand the love of an N64 or a Dreamcast. Did you, did you should what want system? it to come back. <laughs> no, I want PS2. That is oh. my first love. Oh. That is the console. It is also widely the favorite console. So I don't know what you two are talking about because PS2 is where it's at. Okay, that was the, the first game I ever fell in love outside of Zelda. Okay, that's like... I'm sorry, what's that? That's in 64, isn't but, it? I'm sorry, what's um, that? <laughs> Ocarina of Tizan. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom Hearts came from that game. Final Fantasy started from the Playstations. Mm. Like, just ones that, that just... They eat away at your soul in the best ways. You want to sit down. You are willing to die playing these games. You don't want to think about the rest of your life because you want to play on this console. All of the games that came out are still games that are favored today. I just, I, I don't understand why either of you two picked those when PS2 is still talked about as one of the best, con like, I, 
That's it's good. That's my choice. That's good. my choice. Okay. It's, good. it's good. There's a reason why they kept going with different numbers. Oh. Snap. <laughs> All right. Gloves are off. Ding, ding, ding. I'm ringing the bell. The ref is stepping in, and I am awarding points as such. First, let's address Jay's response. Jay, you hit home because Dreamcast, as you know, is one of my favorite systems. As a matter of fact, last week I bought a Dreamcast. Oh my God. So I now, <laughs> so I, I have a Dreamcast and have definitely been playing Omicron Nomad Soul. If nobody knows what that is, it is a very awesome game with a soundtrack by David Bowie. I highly suggest you, you check you it out. You talked about that on our episode. For yes. A, a it's while. amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. So for that, I'm giving you six points. I love your passion, and I love the fact that you Thank want a Dreamcast. Thank you. OC, I am also giving you six points mm -hmm. because I so agree with you about your passion. I've never played an N64, so I have no idea. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> but it's if sad. you would listen to the, the episode that uh, Mia and Jay both referenced... I was not a Nintendo household for some reason. I have no idea why. It was Sega, 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 and then boom, jump to Sony, yeah. and then that was it. <laughs> and that's where I've been ever since. Uh, so, but I give you a solid six points because your passion was there. You made a good argument, Mia. I'm also giving you six points. What? Everybody's getting six <laughs> points. Do you know why? Because everybody's passionate about it, and none of you are wrong. All of those systems deserve a place in the pantheon of it systems. But even though you all got the same amount of points, it does mean one of you has to go away. And that has Jay closing out the round at 17 points, OC closing out the round at 18 points, and Mia closing out the round at 15 points. Mia, I'm sorry. Everybody say bye to Mia. It's time bye, to Mia. move on. I shall miss you. It's time I to like move on to the to the last round. Now, guys, I'm going to queue up the last round here. But our last round on this episode is very, very special. And when we get back, I'll tell you why. All right, guys, this last round is special because this last round is brought to you by Geek Grind Coffee Company. That's right. The last round has a sponsor. We're official, guys. Uh, the last round is brought to you by Geek Grind Coffee. Geek Grind Coffee is 100% hand-harvested coffee for geeks by geeks. The rich Colombian blends will keep you alert and ready no matter the quest you're going to head on over to geekgrindcoffee.com slash project nerd and use the code PRONERD20 for 20% 20 off your very first order. That's geekgrindcoffee.com slash project hyphen nerd. Thank you, Geek Grind Coffee, for being the sponsor of this last round. Boom. There you go. And so if you're making your order, there is the web address to check it out and enter in that code for 20% off. Now, guys, I'm going to leave their logo up here while we ask. This is it. This is for all the marbles, as they say. Mm -hmm. Somebody says that. I am sure of it. This We're question may be, may be the most important. All right? This is where we decide who gets the last word. So we're just diving right into it, guys. DC just announced today that their DC Fandom online event will return this October. While they have only ever been an online event, plenty of other conventions, such as San Diego Comic-Con, will be returning in person. With vaccinations rolling out and a large swath of the population undergoing the prick, it appears that theater reopenings and even more live events and gatherings are soon to be on the horizon. That said, is it too soon? Or are you like, hell yeah, get me back out there. Let's go with OC. What do you think about this? All right. So this is a very serious, um, serious question. I mean, it's a very... Yeah. Uh, Highly debated question. 
So for me, um, the first thing I want to say, COVID is still out there. I mean, it didn't just go away because we got vaccinations. You have a lot of people who haven't gotten it, um, who are, really aren't eligible. There's so many different things across state lines um, that have changed for so many people. And I understand the need and want to get back to normalcy. Um, that said, I am still for gatherings and for um, opening things back up and trying to get back to normalcy. That being that also being said, <laughs> there should be <laughs> guidelines like let's make sure that we're still not going full speed back into thousand state like thousands of people in a stadium and things like that. We should still be acting as if this is a real thing because it is. People are still being affected. Families are being affected. Um, it, it's still a very real um, thing. I, I'm all about finding that normalcy. Mental health is so important and just getting back out there trying to do things that make us feel like ourselves again is so, so important. From somebody who ha deals with mental health, just being quarantined and things like that, it's nice to get back to the normalcy. But I definitely want to make sure we're taking care of each other, um, even with these events and having those guidelines in place. I like that. That's a well thought out answer. I appreciate it. Jay, where do you fall? All right. I'm going to talk about Michael Jordan a little bit. No, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I OC, I want to commend you for your answer. I think it's, again, it's, it's very well thought out and it, it's right on the mark. I personally, I have a lot of the same opinions. I am one that have chosen, that has chosen and has had the opportunity to get vaccinated and I was happy to do so. And I, but I also continue to wear masks when I go inside. And I, because the simple fact remains that while I know my actions and while I know my family's actions and my friend's actions, there's probably about 40% to 50% of people who I would consider doing things that aren't the same way I would want to do them. And instead of trying to control it, it, like say, you have to do it this way. I think we should just have an agreement on let's take the right baby steps together to get to where we want to be. And, and listen, the, 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 the loss of movie theaters over this past year has been horrifying for, for, I mean, everything that's been horrifying, but as me as a film lover and Q, you know, you know, my personal taste towards that. It's been like, a, that's what we did to go out and have a good time was go to the movies. Uh, but kids had ruined that long before COVID ever did. So, you know, <laughs> there, there were, there were realities to me being quarantined. I was like, yeah, this changes my life. Maybe about 10%. Um, but I think that we should move in a direction of. <sighs> sustained safety while moving towards activities that align us around art and creativity and passion again. I think there is immense value in being passionate and enjoying things together in groups. Uh, but I just want, I want it to be done smartly and I want all of us to respect and love each other in the process. Uh, and that's like the, I guess the, the most honest way I can answer that question. I, I respect both of those answers, gentlemen. I can honestly say that this is maybe the toughest last round that I've had. Cause you both were saying essentially the same thing. Yes. Very but, similar. Mm -hmm. But the, the only thing that eked it out for me was even though it is a dour subject, Finding a little bit of humor in your pitch made it made it resonate with me. So, with that being said, OC, I am awarding you 100 points for the last round. That puts you at a total of 118 points. And as much as it pains me to do this, it legitimately pains me. I am going to award Jay 102 points which ends the round at 119 points, making Jay tonight's winner. Oh, oh my goodness. officially oh. awarding. Oh. I mean, it pains me in my soul to do that. I know how much. In the beginning, I'm like, no matter this, what, Jay is I'm not, not going to be not the winner. Not going to win. 
You told me when I was joining, you're like, you can't win. Uh, I hate you. Also, maybe one of the best comebacks in last word history. Ooh. You started with a negative two. Man. You ended winning by one point. One point. I, but that's how great both your answers were. Everybody, say bye to OC. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in just bye. a minute. <laughs> oh, see you guys. Jay, Jay oh, this, is, this is your moment. This is, is it. it. So soak it in. Because when we come back... You are going to get the last word. Oh, man. I can't believe. Can't believe you did it. Uh, who? You know. Jay, oh, here you I, go. Let me, hold on. Let me, let me, let me cue you up proper. Boom. Oh, oh, Enjoy that. that. All right. You know what? 30 Honestly, seconds. Of- starting now. A lot of people would probably think I was going to pitch High Five Cole on the podcast, the show, the podcast that we host that's amazing and talk about movies. Uh, But I'm not. I'm actually going to let everybody know that as me, a huge, huge book nerd, Project Nerd has a new book club coming out. It's not hosted by me. It's hosted by somebody else who loves books, but it's something I'm going to be following. And it's something that everybody who nerds out about books and reading and you're a bibliophile like myself, you should be caring about. We're going to be talking about it on Discord. We're going to be talking about it on the site. But if you love books, if that's something that you nerd out about like me, you need to join the Project Nerd Book Club. You'll see me in there. You'll see Tyler in there. You'll see a lot of our faces in there. Um, And then eventually you'll hear me talk about some books as well. So. That's my plug be- for de- 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 Wrap it up. Wrap it up. No, that Page was great. master. That was, that was sincerely excellent. Let's drop this link at the bottom. Jay, congratulations on being tonight's Thank you. champion. Yeah. Let's bring everybody back in. Jess, OC, Mia. All right, guys. I wanted to give everybody the opportunity to say bye. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight's episode of The Last Word. If you want to see more episodes of The Last Word, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is YouTube. Find Project Hyphen Nerd. Not only are you going to find Last Word, but you're going to find amazing other video content all over the place. Go check it out. Also, make sure you check out geekgrindcoffee.com slash Project hyphen nerd, enter in code pro nerd 20 for 20% off your first order. Jay, you got the last word. Mia, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at the every model. You can find me on Patreon under the same name, Twitter under the same name. And no, not Facebook. State. No, it's just, just Twitter and Patreon and Instagram at the every model. <laughs> and even though she didn't plug it, you can also hear her at high five <laughs> on the podcast. Which is maybe more important than any of those things that she just listed. Absolutely, of course. Uh, Jess, where can people find you if you want them to? (laughs) Don't find me. Please don't find me. (laughs) Don't don't (laughs) find Jess. Just appreciate her for being a great. (laughs) Appreciate for her for being a great contestant. OC, same same goes to you. If you want people to find you, cool. If not, understood. Uh, Finding me is not too interesting, but. You can find uh, Instinct Fitness and MMA. We're a new uh, gym that just opened up this week. Uh, feel Boom. free to follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And uh, if you guys are in the area of New Jersey, swing by and uh, we'll help you out get some, getting some workouts. Get, get swole. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. We will see you next time on The Last Word. Do, 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 do,